Hi everyone, my name is Sean Harrington from ISBT. Um, I'm the co-chairman of BevTech Asia Pacific and today my presentation for FHA's drinks webinar is on innovating FMCGs for Asia's dynamic drinks market. Uh, who are ISBT? Uh, ISBT stands for the International Society uh, for Beverage Technology and we are a organization that's basically uh, dedicated to promotion, development um, and distribution of knowledge related to uh, basically beverage, uh, soft drink uh, technology uh, and helping the industry uh, with that. Um, we have individual uh, key decision maker members in 50 countries and we've been working in with the beverage industry for 70 years. Uh, our organisation is a, uh, made up of technical committees for various uh, aspects of the beverage uh, manufacturing and distribution business um, and basically we're the originator of a lot of the methodologies that are used uh, and voluntary standards that are used in the beverage industry worldwide. Uh, just give you a beverage industry overview from our perspective. Uh, the kinds of beverages that ISBT represent are drinks like carbonated soft drink, juices, water, coffee, tea, uh, dairy, etc. Uh, are the kind of areas of, of, uh, of beverage that we're looking after and, and we're uh, representing within our organisation. Um, if you look at the soft drinks uh, market, you can see in Asia Pacific we're still a very big portion of the uh, soft drink market share. Uh, this slide's from 2018 with 33% uh, of the global market. Um, if you look at the kind of categories um, uh, in, in regard to that uh, beverage sector, um, from the breakdown you can see here that packaged water is uh, a very big portion of the beverage categories uh, and that's certainly a growing and has been a, a growing uh, part of the beverage market for, for many years. Um, in 2015 uh, packaged water overtook carbonated soft drink as the most popular beverage category uh, and it's been growing ever since. Um, what's the reason for that and the reason that carbonated soft drink is declining um, mainly uh, that's to do with uh, health and perception of health in the beverage market consumers are tending to change uh, what they're consuming basing their decisions more on health benefits of the uh, beverage that they're consuming these days um, we're also seeing uh, a big growth in the market of craft sodas and smaller companies uh, coming out with more unique seasonal regional uh, type products um, that are giving the bigger players in the market uh, more of a hard time. Um, I think nowadays the consumer has a lot more choice in the beverages that they uh, choose to consume. If you look back from the 1970s there was very little uh, variety in, in the types of drinks that were in the market. Uh, as we move across to today you can see that there's a much wider variety of, of beverages and the consumer has a far wider choice of what they drink these days. Um, packaging is a very very important part of our business especially if you want to differentiate your product uh, in the market the consumer is very driven by uh, what the package looks like uh, what's written on the package uh, the label, the size, the design of the packages um, very important to make your product stand out uh, and be selected from the shelf. Um, the marketplace uh, of, of beverages is, is changing and, and has been changing for many years not just because of COVID. Um, you can see from this chart that carbonated soft drink uh, is still a huge part of, of the business but it's not really where the high growth area is. The high growths tend to be in this area where you've got you know your, your, your milk based products, plant based products, uh, healthy 
uh, or perceived to be healthy type products is where the high growth areas are in the market at the moment. Um, most emerging categories have health and wellness attributes and, and that's not just to do with what's been going on with COVID, although that's had a, a, a bit of an impact on, on what people are uh, deciding to drink uh, these days. Um, but most emerging trends have some kind of uh, wellness attribute now. Um, you know, things like health shots, plant-based products, um, uh, tea, uh, milk, almond milk, these kinds of products. Um, and, and of course, things like kombucha, which have, have got perceived health benefits uh, is where people are, are kind of tending to, to move away from those more traditional drinks into these uh, speciality type products. Uh, new types of products that are coming out, uh, immunity boosters is another big uh, potential in the market, especially these days uh, with what's going on in the world. Um, also uh, wellness drinks, uh, based on um, fruits and, and uh, things like barley water, which was a drink that was very popular many years ago, has started to come back into trend again. Um, zero sugar or no sugar products uh, have, have been popular for a while, but they're coming out now in, in lots of new variants, new flavors, new packaging. Uh, and it's something that the consumer is, is conscious of these days to, uh, again, to reduce sugar intake. Um, home delivery type products are becoming very popular. This example is from Indonesia where uh, companies like Starbucks, for example, are, are doing uh, home delivery of, of cold brew uh, coffee uh, to, to the market. Um, so again, you've got to innovate your product uh, based based on uh, the, the current market. Um, Plant-based products are becoming very popular. Um, things like almond, uh, barley, wheat, um, uh, oat milk, etc., is becoming very popular in the market and we're seeing more and more of these plant-based beverages because of the perceived uh, benefit, uh, health benefits. Um, low, no alcohol uh, is also increasing uh, worldwide. We're seeing a trend uh, also in these kinds of products where um, people are tending to uh, move away from uh, alcohol and, and get, want an alternative that tastes the same um, but, but has a low alcohol content. Um, we're also seeing uh, ingredients such as hibiscus, uh, turmeric, watermelon, cucumber, again with health benefits, lots of products, uh, niche products coming from small, uh, smaller companies, uh, taking market share away with these kinds of uh, unique products. Um, there's also a trend towards crossover type products, so again kombucha tea, uh, 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 brewed ginger beer with things like caramel in it etc uh, are starting to come onto the market uh, and, and being uh, on trend. Um, we shouldn't forget uh, about the uh, hemp and cannabis uh, market because this is uh, becoming a very very big uh, uh, growth area in, in our kind of business. Um, they're saying that the global cannabis drinks market will be worth about 1.82 billion worldwide uh, by the end of this year, and then that will grow to 5.8 billion by 2024. Um, and it's certainly been a trend in those countries where uh, cannabis has been legalized. Um, and again, it's for uh, recreational use and perceived health benefits of, of this type of product. Um, Milk is uh, is a product that's been around for a long time, but it's kind of rebranding itself, making itself more trendy, making itself uh, more um, interesting to the consumer. Um, and again, we're seeing these oat type products. We're seeing uh, soy, almond milk um, uh, with, with very big uh, rapid increases in the market. Um, if we take a look at COVID-19, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, I know it's a well-known fact at the moment, but there are some challenges and opportunities with COVID within our industry. Um, and we just wanted to sort of highlight some of those for you. 
Um, if you look at uh, pre-COVID uh, marketplace, um, the global soft drink volume growth was, was actually very, very good and a very strong upward trend. Um, that's continuing, but it's changing. Um, you know, there, there's still the consumption is still there, but the the sectors of the market where that that growth is is taking place is changing, um, as I mentioned before. Um, if you look at on trade sales, obviously they've gone down and plummeted because people are not going to bars and restaurants and clubs etc. like they were. Um, but some of that market has moved uh, towards packaged products, of course. Um, globally. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market and big changes in, in, in GDPs of countries uh, based on, on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic um, and obviously it's been, been affecting every country in the world. Um, other issues to do with uh, the pandemic are there's a, a, a CO2 shortage in the world at the moment and a few times where, where companies, big companies, have, have actually run out of CO2. So this is a challenge in the, in the current market. The gas suppliers um, are building new gas plants, looking for new CO2 sources, etc., um, to try to fill the market needs. Um, but, but yeah, that's been an issue uh, and continues to be be an issue uh, in the current climate. Um, also, uh, shortages of beverage cans and, and packaging, um, and that's basically uh, as a result of everybody moving from keg type beverages uh, where they're out at a restaurant or a bar uh, drinking, um, where they're doing it at home now, that's also driven a huge uh, amount of sales through cans and packaged products, so there's been a shortage. Um, also shipping has, has caused lots of, uh, of delays and problems uh, in, in that uh, supply chain as well. Um, we see ingredient sourcing as a longer term issue, um, you know, there's going to be uh, impacts on agriculture and food processing industries that are going to affect our business and that's something to look out for in the future and to be aware of that, that ingredient sourcing is going to become challenging in the future. Um, basically COVID has also driven the demand for better for you beverages as I said health benefits and more diverse beverages are what people are looking for now they want to drink something that makes them feel like that it's ad actually adding something to their well-being um, consumer uh, impact uh, uh, is basically uh, affecting how people are designing beverages these days um, basically healthier approach to the drinks, drinks that improve their, their diet, stress relieving, calming, that kind of, uh, of beverage is what some, some uh, people are looking for. Um, there's been a major shift uh, from uh, retailers to online purchasing, of course, because of the pandemic. So this has again had a big impact on, on what bottlers are doing and, and their volumes and their growth in certain markets. Um, so basically we're now looking at a new normal where um, you know we've adjusted uh, to, to the situation at the moment where retailers, bars and restaurants are closed. Obviously that's going to change uh, over time as people get immunised etc and the world starts opening up again but currently um, this is the reality that we're living in at the moment. Um, it does give us opportunity to innovate. So you see companies like Coca-Cola looking at contactless uh, vending, for example. This is one example that I found, uh, or we found, um, that we found very, we thought was very interesting, that Coca-Cola have come up with this freestyle uh, product. Um, also suppliers such as Tetra Pak, et cetera, are innovating by doing things like virtual product development, where they actually help you develop uh, your your new product in their facility virtually um, and also gives uh, uh, a chance for some other uh, disruptive opportunities this company BPI which is out of Australia are basically uh, a, a conglomerate of craft beverage suppliers and, and they're actually uh, grouping those craft beverages together into one big company and then using that uh, distribution network and power 
uh, to, to be disruptive in the market and to get those smaller brands out to a wider audience. Um, so in summary, the impact of COVID is still to be de determined. Our business uh, is a very, very uh, uh, changing business, evolving business. Um, we, we are lucky that there are still massive volumes of consumption, but that uh, consumption is changing the consumer is changing the consumer is very fickle um, you know they'll go in the past they would have stuck with their brand of beverage uh, you know for, for longer periods of time now they're very fickle and change their mind uh, depending on the health benefits of that drink or what they uh, need uh, in their current situation um, so our business has to innovate to adapt to the current situ uh, situation and we have to basically uh, yeah, innovate our technology and use the, the technology that's available to, to, to meet the market demand. Uh, and the future is still an open book and nobody really knows what's going to happen in the future. Um, but we can certainly see that the beverage industry is changing uh, and the consumer is the main driver of that. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I have... Uh, also uh, some credits to give to people that have given me the information for my presentation but I uh, hope uh, my presentation gave you some at least some information and if you need anything further from ISBT or myself uh, please get in contact and, and we'll be more than happy to help you. So thank you very much. Bye bye.